Well, students are back at school at Eagle Crest High School after two special education teachers died over the weekend. One was suffering symptoms that are consistent with bacterial meningitis. We don't know what caused the second teacher's death. The school was closed for a day to do deep cleaning of the classrooms, and the special education program will be continue to be closed throughout the week. So right now, the Arapahoe County Health Department said that it has finished their contract tracing. It is raising so many questions about meningitis uh, just because of the facility in a school. So we have our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley. Yeah, the word meningitis is scary when you hear it. How concerned should parents be if their child did have contact with these teachers? Uh, you know, the good news about meningitis is that it requires usually prolonged close contact. Okay. So we're talking exchange of oral secretions. So someone you might be kissing, someone you might be living with, a roommate or a spouse or what have you. So kind of casual contact or walking by the air that somebody that had meningitis breathed is not necessarily going to increase your exposure. But it's concerning. It certainly is concerning. I'm actually an Eagle Crest alum. Yeah. And I was shocked to hear this news because we don't yeah. often see young people getting such severe cases of bacterial meningitis for sort of no clear reason. Is it particularly common? Is it unusual to see cases like this? You know, you can see cases like this. Most of us should have been vaccinated against okay. bacterial meningitis. And meningitis can be caused not just by bacteria, but by viruses as well. In fact, it can even be caused by cancer, by medications. And oh. really what it is, is inflammation of the meninges, which is the lining around the brain and around the spinal cord. So there's a number of different types of conditions that can cause it. Uh, and sometimes we see certain parts of the country that have certain types of West Nile virus and others having more cases of encephalitis, which is inflammation of the brain or meningitis. But this type of bacterial meningitis is usually caused by a list of sort of specific bacteria that are most commonly spread through contact. But there's some bacteria that can be spread through contaminated food as well. And I know at this school, the students that had contact with the teachers have been given antibiotics. What symptoms should parents be on the lookout for here? Yeah, so you know, meningitis can progress very quickly, especially bacterial meningitis. And the mortality rate is really high. So if you think about the, the sac around the brain and the spinal cord, you certainly can get a stiff neck because that sac is inflamed. You can get a headache. The pressure inside the brain goes up so you can have nausea and vomiting. You can have super high fevers. And then if it starts to push on the brain or the spinal cord, you can have confusion. You can have sensitivity to light. Mm. So any of these types of symptoms should set off an alarm bell because the earlier you get those antibiotics on board, yeah. the better the prognosis. And I'm really glad they're prophylaxing because anyone who's had a potential exposure should have those antibiotics preventively. And if you do receive them preventatively, I mean, how does that change the outcome for a person? Significantly improves, you know, and so the likelihood if you're getting preventive antibiotics, because the major thing here is really time is inflammation, right. and the faster you can make the diagnosis, and sometimes it's nonspecific because, you know, think about it, a headache and fever, sure. it can be sort of nonspecific. But if you get them on board really quickly, you can actually turn around the infection very soon. You had mentioned a, a vaccine that a lot of us should have received. Okay, can you walk us through when that should have been and it if you should be checking if that's in your records or not? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So babies can get meningitis vaccine. Um, and then usually the CDC recommends preteen, so around 11 or 12 <laughs> years old with a booster shot a little bit later. Now, if you're somebody who's high risk of exposure, we, we think about like military recruits or people who live in prisons mm -hmm. or, you know, college students, a close contact sort of with other people on a constant basis with possibly a source of infection, then you may want to think about getting a booster as well. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, Dr. Piacoli, we appreciate your expertise as always. Very important topic, especially with what's happening at this school. Thank you. Thank you so much.